A fleet of Tesla's electric semi-trucks has begun its way to Frito-Lay in California. In fact, this has been a long time coming. The Tesla Semi is the longest suffering of the company's many delayed projects and has been developing for three years. However, a lot of progress has been in the industry during that time. In addition to Tesla's battery-powered semi-trucks, a few others from competing brands have also gone on the road. Nonetheless, the Tesla Semi has no equals. So, is there a reason for that? And how does Tesla enter a new market segment and immediately overpower an automotive technology already six years before it even made its first shipment? Let's answer those questions in this video, so make sure to stick with me till the end. The Tesla Semi is a brilliant engineering achievement and it resembles a standard semi-truck in appearance. They're small, but they give Tesla a big advantage. And according to industry analysts, this is why Tesla unveiled their design prototype so quickly. They needed it hammered into everyone's heads that they came first and that anyone trying to copy them would be doing so at their own peril. This means that Tesla is basically merging the best features of American and European heavy trucking design into their semi. Moreover, the benefits of electrifying the platform are then exploited to create the ideal semi-truck. And in order to understand the fundamentals, we must first value the time and effort that went into building our current heavy trucks the old-fashioned way. The North American long-nosed delivery truck is instantly recognizable. The huge diesel engine is now directly in front of the driver. And because of this, the cabin space behind the driver can be pretty sizable, making it suitable for use as a bedroom. A typical size for a truck of this type is 20 feet or more in length when measured from the center of the wheels. But in the States, the length of a tractor trailer is not regulated. Heavy trucks in Europe and Asia feature a nearly horizontal front end, which has become the standard in those regions. They were able to do this by installing the engine beneath the seat of the driver. That probably results in a bumper ride and a tighter cabin, but it does provide a large, partially obscured forward view for the driver. In addition, most Euro trucks do not feature any sort of sleeper compartment, and just like in North America, they don't practice the same method of long-distance driving. And the flat front is primarily due to European regulations and road conditions. These vehicles typically have a shorter wheelbase of around 10 feet and are much more compact overall. Now, there are two main factors at play here. First, European roads are generally narrower than American roads, and trucks need a tighter turning radius as a result. Second, the combined length of a Euro transport truck and trailer cannot exceed 61 feet, and so to maximize trailer space, they require a truck with a short cab. Now, let's revert back to the Tesla Semi. It has an overall appearance closer to the American truck because of its pointed front end rather than its flat one, and similar to a European truck, the driver sits in the front because there is no diesel engine. Moreover, because the Tesla driver sits in the center of the vehicle, their field of view is unobstructed. In addition to allowing for more room in the front of the car, moving the driver forward into the nose of the car also improves visibility. However, the back of the semi-cabin has not been officially revealed to be a sleeping area. There also appears to be sufficient headroom for the driver, who should not feel cramped sitting in the back. Although Tesla hasn't confirmed it, it's estimated that the semi's wheelbase will be about 13 feet long. In other words, Tesla has managed to cram all the cabin space and comfort required for American long-haul trucking into a slightly larger floor area than the sleek European truck. The wheelbase of a Ford F-150 XLT is about 12 feet. In other words, the Tesla semi should have nearly the same turning radius as a pickup truck. Elon Musk claims it has the handling of a sports car. Now, this is very unlikely, but if true, the vehicle should have incredible handling for its size. You see, these innovations in Tesla's design are only possible due to the truck's electric powertrain. 
they are using the extra room created by ditching the diesel engine, and it seems obvious that this should be done. But the electric trucking industry as a whole doesn't seem to agree. Now, let's take a look at how the Tesla Semi's rivals over the past few years fared against it, and truth be told, there are only so many major players. Some examples include Freightliner e Cascadia, manufactured by Daimler Group, Volvo FH Electric, and Nikola TRE. These are Class A trucks powered by batteries, just like Tesla's. Interestingly, all of these rivals have opted to model their trucks after conventional diesel vehicles. And while the Volvo and the Nikola use a European-style flat-face cab, the Freightliner adopts the more familiar American long-nose cab. Tesla's first design tenet was used in this context by the company as it set out to create the most advanced electric truck ever. Everyone else simply adapted an existing truck design and retrofitted it with electric components, and the results are evident. The e Cascadia has a claimed range of 230 miles, the Volvo FH Electric of 187 miles, and the Nikola TRE, its closest competitor, of a very respectable 330 miles. But the Tesla is head and shoulders above the competition, with a claimed 500 mile range when fully loaded and traveling on flat ground, according to Elon Musk. Furthermore, Batteries and transmissions could account for some of the variations. However, aerodynamics play a significant role, especially in the case of a vehicle of this size. Moreover, Tesla's first principal design also gives them a significant advantage. As a result, the American long-nose semi-truck can effectively slice through the air. The drag coefficient of the most up-to-date designs is approximately 0.5. However, the aerodynamic properties of the flat-faced Eurotruck are comparable to those of a cinder block. They can also achieve a drag coefficient of 0.9. Tesla asserts that the drag coefficient of the semi is just 0.36, and for a vehicle of that size and purpose, this is extremely hazardous. It's about as fast as the typical sports car. The Tesla Model S and the Lucid Air are currently the most aerodynamic consumer vehicles, with a drag coefficient of about 0.2. So why is it that only Tesla is fully utilizing their electric truck platform? You see, that's a difficult question to answer. But this is why Tesla has invested so much time and money into developing its own semi. Because if something is important enough to do, it should be done well. At Tesla, they're working to hasten the worldwide adoption of renewable power. And so, there is no way that this transition can occur successfully with the current crop of subpar heavy truck designs on the market. Now, before we continue, I'd like to thank you for getting this far. And if you want to know more about the Semi's battery, architecture, and powertrain, then make sure to watch this next part. The battery, electronic architecture, and powertrain are all crucial components in making the Tesla so fast. Also, the system that controls the Tesla Semi is, as far as we can tell, not radically different from the one used to control standard Tesla cars. And recent statements by Elon Musk have confirmed that the Semi does not utilize the new 4680 battery cell. This indicates that the 2170 Panasonic cell manufactured by Giga Nevada is in use. This is a brilliant move. You see, the 4680 cell has excellent potential to develop into a high-performance battery cell. We are also aware that the design Tesla has been shipping so far this year is not yet at that stage. If you've been watching our past videos, then you must know that Sandy Monroe and company tore into a brand new Giga Texas Model Y earlier this year. Afterward, they took out 4,680 cells and sold them at an auction. The YouTube channel Limiting Factor bought one of those cells and sent it away for a thorough examination. They discovered that the 4680 cell has a lower volumetric energy density than the 2170 cell. And this is measured in watt-hours of energy storage per kilogram of battery weight. There are 269 watt-hours of energy storage space in the Panasonic 2170 for every kilogram of weight, 
while the 4680 only has 244 watt hours. Therefore, the 2170 cell is preferable to the 4680 in its current form if the goal is to store as much energy as possible in a limited area, such as the underbody of a semi truck. Currently, the 2170 is also much more widely available than the 4680. The Tesla Semi is large enough to accommodate a vast quantity of batteries. As a matter of fact, it can hold at least 10 times as many as a Tesla sedan. We also shouldn't rule out the possibility that Tesla is actually using the 18650 battery cell from before for the Semi. The Model S and the Model X both use the same batteries. And at about 280 watt hours per kilogram, their density is the highest of any cell Tesla uses. Because of this, Tesla will continue to use this cell even after the 2021 refresh of the Model S and X, when the new three motor plate powertrain will be standard equipment. These small ones produce the most power and energy compared to other battery types, and they're also a breeze to cool down. Now, the Model S Plaid's ability to maintain full speed for long periods is one of its primary benefits. Not only is the battery pack not overheated, but thermal throttling is not required. Furthermore, these batteries can rapidly absorb a charge. Charging the Model S Plaid's 100kWh battery pack from 10 to 80% using a V3 supercharger with 250kW of power takes less than 25 minutes. So, once again, we don't know for sure, but the 18650 could be the best battery cell for the Tesla Semi. One of Tesla's greatest strengths is its short battery charge time. Their Semi can not only travel further on a single charge, but it can also recharge its batteries much faster. The E-Cascadia, which has a range of 230 miles, has a respectable 80% charge time of 90 minutes. The Volvo FH Electric claims to recharge to its 187 mile range in just 2.5 hours. Also, Nikola TRE estimates that 80% of its 330 mile range can be reached in 160 minutes. The Tesla Semi claims it can travel 500 miles on a single charge and that the battery can be recharged 70% in 30 minutes. Now, 70% of 500 is 350, so we're talking about achieving roughly the energy output of the Nikola battery pack in less than a fifth of the time it takes to charge the Nikola to 80%. You see, Nikola trucks, like many others, use the universally accepted CCS charging plug. This charging port is the same type used by most electric vehicles worldwide. The maximum power output of these charging standards is 500 kilowatts, far exceeding the needs of the average passenger vehicle. Unfortunately, it lacks the features essential for widespread use in commercial vehicles. That's why Tesla had to rush to market with its own high output mega charger, and it needs to be a supercharger that is even stronger than the one they already have. Tesla is the only electric vehicle maker to develop and market its own charging infrastructure, and so it's worth noting that they've been doing this for a long time and are experts at it. Earlier this year, the supercharged network celebrated a decade of existence. As such, they were in an ideal position to create a one-of-a-kind charging station that would unleash the full potential of their electric semi-truck. Therefore, Tesla constructed their semi-truck because they are the only company capable of producing such a vehicle. They can get it working at the level necessary to finally switch from diesel to electric power in the heavy trucking industry. And this idea lies at the heart of Tesla's mission as a business. So, what do you think of Tesla's long-delayed semi-truck? Will this change the entire trucking industry once it hit the roads? Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And while you're at it, make sure to smash the like and subscribe buttons as well. Now, if you want to know more about the Tesla Semi, then make sure to click and watch this video right here and enjoy! And that's the end of this video guys, see you next time!